Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at this adorable little watercolor set. I received it a couple weeks ago, I've been playing with it, and um, today I'm gonna review it for you. If you follow along on my channel and you watch Snapchat, you probably saw me unbox this because it was so cute and I wanted to show it to you before I got it grimy <laughs> from using it. So um, today we're gonna have the official review. It comes in a pouch like this, and this was sent to me for free from Artsy for review purposes. I've tried some of their other products in the past and been generally pretty impressed with them. I like their gouache set of 24 a lot. I like their watercolor set of 24 a lot, and I like their folding and fan palettes as well. And this is another one of um, those palettes that are like the folding and fan palettes. So what you get in the set is you get, um, you don't get that swatch, but you get the palette, you get two extra water brushes, the palette has one inclu included, and you get a pouch. Now this is made in China, that is denoted on the package, and I recommend you keep this package because it's pretty decent, it's pretty durable, and it's gonna be handy for not losing your water brushes or your swatch that um, I will show you how to make later. So um, I, uh, I took the mat off my table, so hopefully this is a little easier to see. I hope the lighting is all right. Um, so here you have a water brush in the middle. It holds one and it comes with three. I like the largest round the best, but it's also have, has a small round and a flat. I can show you those right here. So you got a little round brush and a flat brush. The little round is a good for detail, but it does feed out a lot of water as you're working. So it's just something to keep in mind. I haven't really used the flat much because I don't really have much use for a flat water brush other than I probably use it to wet an area with clear water for a two, two brush method, quite frankly, but it's there. And, um, but you can only store one in the palette. So that's another reason you might want to keep the pouch just so you have the, the, if you want to keep your other brushes with you. You've got uh, three mixing areas, a big one up here and two small ones. The paints do not bead up here and I'll show you that in a second. And there's a sponge to wipe your water brush off um, to clean it between colors if you don't have like a rag with you, you're out painting and you don't have a, a painting rag. Now your paints are contained on these blades, kind of like a fan, uh, kind of like a, you know, ceiling fan blades. And you've got two metallic blades and so there's 10 metallic colors. You've got, um, five greens, you, I'm, so, I'm sorry, six greens, six blues, uh, another blade of a six that's got uh, blues, purples, and grays, and black. And the thing I do like about this versus the other fan palettes I've used is that you can arrange them so you can see all of your colors. Sometimes that top color gets a little bit mixed, um, gets hidden, but you can access all the colors there. Over here you've got two blades with pastels, well, that's a really bright color, but kind of your more opaque colors. You've got um, yellows and a white, you've got reds and pinks, then you get your earth tones. So you got a nice variety of color here. Again, like I said, you can access everything if you fan it out just right. These don't flop around like the uh, like some of the other ones I've had, so that's kind of nice. It should stay still. You've got a thumb ring on the back. This is actually comfortable to hold. Like I'm right-handed, so I can hold this on my left hand, have a sketchbook on my lap or on the table in front of me, and use my water brush. Um, that's fine for a water brush. If you're dipping into water and coming over, you risk dropping stuff on your painting if you're holding this in your non-dominant hand. But um, but for using a water brush, I find this to be pretty easy. Now I'm gonna get the water brush out and just kind of demo uh, demo a little bit here. Let me grab a little watercolor postcard or something because, you know, we'll, I don't know what we're gonna paint, guys. Oh my gosh, we're living on the edge today. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what you could do, you just start your water brush, get some water going, and then, you know, you can choose whatever color you want. I'll take a little bit of blue, basically, because I want to clean off that pan, because I had used another color. And, you know, you could just start maybe doing a little... Maybe we'll do a rainbow flower. So we got the blue. Oh, I want to clean my brush. So what I'll do is I'll squeeze a little water out, and I will wipe it on my sponge. Then maybe I'll get a little purple. I believe this is a purple color here. Mm, that does not appear to be a purple color. i got to consult my swatch. Ah, uh, my purple is, let's clean that off again. My purple is up here actually. And this is why you need to make a swatch is because otherwise you're not gonna be able to tell what you have for colors. I'm gonna clean off my brush again. I'm gonna grab some pink. Look, the colors are beautiful. They're very vibrant. They dilute well. I'm just gonna squeeze, well, let me squeeze a little bit up there. The, I find that the paint doesn't really bead up on the palette. I'm gonna grab a little bit of 
See, I can mix it out. It doesn't beat up too bad. And this is a brand new plastic palette. So I think that's a pretty good sign. And when it dries, it'll dry all out. It doesn't dry in little beads. And I was going to leave my palette dirty and show you, but I wanted to do a couple of their little paintings with it. I know this isn't the best. This is a pretty ugly rose, but... Oh, and I just made it uglier by by swiping that off. You know, let's use... um, oh, Let's clean our brush there. Now, I don't know if I can remove... Oh, yes, look, we can remove that and we can rinse it out when it gets really dirty. I like that. That's nice. I didn't even know that. Oh my gosh. Great review, Lindsay. How much did you look at this? I didn't want to use a sponge until I showed you because I didn't want it to be gross looking. All right. So let's take the flat. Let's do double loading here. Let's do, oh, maybe triple loading. Let's load up some sap green. Let's load up some hookers green. Let's load up some of this dark blue that we took by accident thinking it was purple. Um, I don't know if I can do this one handed because I usually have to hold my <laughs> paper down. I gotta hold my paper down, guys. Oh, this is a mess. Um, all right, so I don't even know what side I have the dark on. And I spread my bristles out and twist and pull. Make a couple little leaves here. And, oh, let's do, let's kind of do a wet and wet test. Let's wet this leaf and let's add some blue and see how it spreads. I think it blends well. It's not like a whoosh flow of color. Let's do something over here where we have that unfortunate, unfortunate blob. Could have put the stem there. That would have made way more sense. There'll be tutorials for the real artwork I do with this, uh, with the set, some of them anyway. Um, and let's just do, oh let's, oh, let's clean my brush off here. Let's just do a little flow test. This is cotton watercolor paper. It's an Arteza postcard. I have too much water there. I don't typically use, well, let's just make a day of it and paint this whole background in. Um, I don't typically use water brushes. <laughs> That might be too wet to get a good flow test. Let me take a paper towel and blot that a little bit. When you want your paint to flow, you do not, you want the paint shiny. You want the paper shiny like satin finish, but not like super, super glossy. Okay, let's do, let's do some yellow. Let's see how this, not a tremendous amount of flow. Um, let's do some teal. Yeah, it's not flowing an incredible amount. Let's choose a color. It's a little bit more transparent. Let's do that and see. Yeah, even that one's not really flowing. Pretty colors though. Um, yeah, it's not flowing supremely well. Um, I tend to more glaze and layer myself. So um, it's not that big of a deal. I think actually if you're painting outside, uh, you might prefer it to be a little bit less flowy, you know? You might want to be able to control that a little bit more. I don't know if I can clean that off enough so that I can go back into the yellow. Yeah, not a lot of flow. If that's something that you really look for in, in a paint, that's not gonna that's not gonna fit the bill for you. But colors are really pretty. Um, the uh, the paints spread out pretty good on your palette when you're mixing, and they dry nice and flat, and you can re reconstitute them on your palette if you need to. So. That's good. And we can remove the sponge to clean it. It will stain though, just so it's even when you clean it, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be beautiful, pristine white again. So first thing you should do when you get this palette is you should make a swatch. And the way I made the swatch is I took a piece of watercolor paper and I cut a three by six piece and rounded the corners. So it's about the same size as our palette because I want to store it in the pouch with the palette when I'm done. And then I cut one inch by six inch strips of watercolor paper and I drew a line with a Sharpie or a black water uh, permanent marker. And then I swatched all the colors out once, which you can see here. And actually when I first swatched them, I was like, oh, these don't feel as pigmented as the other fan palettes that I had. But I think it's just because they, they had never been used before because when I came in to do the glaze, they were all nice and uh, robust. Now, uh, very transparent colors. The metallics obviously are, are going to be more opaque. And there are some pastel colors in here that are more opaque, a little chalky looking, but not gritty. So that's nice. Um, all your other colors were very transparent. They glazed well. Um, uh, I didn't do a lift test, but we can we can actually do a little lift test right now. 
I need another paper towel though so I can blot. We'll try that right. I'll try a few colors. We'll try ultramarine blue because that usually lifts pretty well and no matter what color it is. Am I on screen? There we go. All right. Oh, look, that lifted up really well. Now let's try a color that we know doesn't lift up very well. Let's do like a phthalo green. That's a hard color to lift, so we'll try that one. Oh, that lifted up pretty well too. I'm surprised. Let's try purple. That's a real tough, tough one to lift. Because they glaze really well. If they lifted really well too, that might be uh, that might be nice for beginners. Yeah, that one's got more of a staining, which would be expected. But still, it does lift fairly decently. These were swatched yesterday, so um, so they have had plenty of time to dry. You could try one of these pinks. Pinks can be it's probably yeah, like a quinacridone pink. Yeah, this stains a little bit, but not too bad. Um, so, yeah, you can lift them, you can glaze them. Um, nice, vibrant, saturated colors. Of course, there's no light fastness information, but um, they look great. They look gorgeous. Uh, I would definitely use them for sketchbook work, maybe painting postcards, maybe taking on vacation if you're worried about like losing your expensive paints. I would definitely say they are a decent deal. Now, somebody mentioned that they had a fan palette and their paint started to curl and then they couldn't close the blades. And I think if you live in a very dry area or at a very high altitude, that can happen. So if you do, you might want to avoid a set like this or you might want to spritz them down with water occasionally to make sure they don't fully dry out too much. But um, I would, but that said, before you close this up, like I just used it, I would let it like dry for five minutes or so before I closed it up so they didn't stick together. Now I want to show you another palette by Artsy and um, it's a folding palette. I made a swatch that folds like that. Now this is under 20 bucks. I can't remember. I, this is the second time I'm filming this because I um, I forgot to mention how the paint doesn't beat up on the palette and I wanted to mention that. So this is another one of their novelty palettes. It's essentially the same paint. You can compare the swatches that they send with you. The numbers are the same. Um, this is better if you want to have a studio palette and have it sit on your table. This is a little awkward and cumbersome on your table. It takes up so much space, but it's great if you want to hold it and paint like outdoors. Um, just depends on what you like. I do like that you could pull these pans out and rearrange them, and you can't do that on those. So that is, uh, if you're kind of trying to compare between the two, that would be the big, um, oh, I'm going to zoom out. That would be the big, compare the big, um, deciding factor, I think, where you can just kind of pop this out and move them around and arrange them the way you want. Or if you want to, you know, reuse a palette and you wanted a deeper well, you could pop these out and put your paint in there. Although I like the white plastic pans just because then you can see what you have. If you're going to refill any of these fan paints, I would recommend using core watercolors because they are less bulky and you get a lot more color and less space. So um, that would be my recommendation. Um, and then just to compare with a regular fan palette, Artsy does make those as well, um, but I've got this one here handy. I think most of these are made by the Superior Company, and that's the brand of this one here. But um, the thing that bothered me about this, and this was one of the first versions, so they've uh, the Artsy one had like an extra mixing tray that this one didn't have. But the thing that always bothered me about this style, even though I really liked it, it's really hard to get to that top color and you can't really access them all when they're all fanned out. It's like you either have that one hidden under there, um, it's just really difficult to access them all, whereas since you have two sides and you get a little extra bit of plastic, you can access all your colors with them out like that. So I do like that. And they do seem to stay put, at least for now, maybe because it's brand new. They're not moving around where these will like close up pretty easily. So, you know, I'm sure that, you know, and it could just be that I've used that one a lot and it's come loose over the years. Maybe I can tighten that screw. I don't know. I guess I didn't, uh, didn't try that yet. Um, but there you have it. I'm not sure if I'm going to use any of the footage of me making this this uh, little swatch. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> but um, but there you have it. It's a very, very nice little palette, um, very inexpensive, under 20 bucks, or it, you know, at least it was at the time that I received it to review. I could probably just blot that and close it actually. Um, yeah, it's neat. It's cute. It uh, Quality seems really good. And I recommend it if you want a novelty palette. Just know that if you have like the other artsy palettes or the other fan palettes from other companies that are similar, you're probably going to have the same colors. There's 56 colors there, so there might be some ones you don't have. And there are metallics, which is nice. But like if I compare this to the artsy uh, folding palette, folding one here, um, the color names and numbers are the same. There's just more in this one than that one. But like F60 there, and there's F or F61, F61. Um, C08, 
CO8, CO9, CO9, you know, so it's the same colors. It just depends if you like that or if you've used up one of the other palettes and you like them, this is the same paint and you can, you know, purchase it with confidence. Oh, the artwork. Ha! Huh, I almost forgot to share the artwork that I did with these. So this is the first thing that I did with them. I just did this like kind of crocus bulb illustration, um, pen and ink with watercolor over it. Very easy to work with, very easy to layer up. Didn't have any issues. I did a tutorial for this one here, these daffodils. Again, I did the pen and ink with watercolor over it. Um, the paint went over the, the pen and ink. I can see the pen clearly underneath. They're very transparent, very nice quality. I don't know about light fastness because I've never done a test on these, but and I've just used them in sketchbooks and on postcards and greeting cards and stuff, but um, I haven't had any issues. <clears throat> Obviously, I don't have anything hanging up in direct sunlight and I live in Maine. It's not like I'm living someplace where there's a lot of sun. Um, but they just, they just behave very, very well. And then I did this carnation here just to see where a loose expressive piece would go. Went very well for a loose expressive painting. And I also just fooled around with those. Kind of used one of the pastel colors and one of the darker colors just to see how they reacted. And they played very nicely together. It could be definitely a way to temper your paint a bit using those pastels. This was just the bright uh, reddish pink color with with water. And, um, you know, it, it flowed well. I feel like it flowed plenty. It flowed plenty for like loose flowers. Um, if you're doing some like really big painting where you, or an abstract where you do need a lot of flow, these are not going to cut it for you. But um, I'd recommend like a core or even the Prima Marketing if you want something on a budget. But um, overall, these are great little paints, inexpensive, fun novelty palettes. If you're in the market for something like that, you have my blessing go for it. I think you'll be very, very happy with it. I will link to these down below. Um, like I mentioned, Artsy sent this palette to me for free to review, and the links down below are Amazon affiliate links, so I will get a small percentage if you make a purchase. Please don't let that influence you. Um, don't buy it if you don't need it, you don't want it. This is, um, I'm just trying to share what I know, and um, and yeah, if you do like them though, I would say go for it. They're, they're decent quality, they work well, and uh, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun, and they're cute, and they're novel, and I think they make a great gift. I could definitely see this going in an Easter basket, or a stocking, or, you know, a gift for any new watercolorist, or a card maker who wants to try watercoloring. It's just such a cute little thing, and you got everything you need, except for paper, uh, so I really, really think that's nice. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this review, and until next time, happy crafting!